पंचकल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी फ्रॉम भगवत गीता चैप्टर 15 वर्स नंबर 7 मामशो बालोक जीव भूत सनातन मनाशस्थानींद्रिया प्रकृतिस्थानी ट्रांसलेशन द लिविंग एंटिटीज इन दिस कंडीशन वर्ल्ड आर माय इटर्नल फ्रगमेंटल पार्ट्स ड्यू टू कंडीशन लाइफ They are struggling very hard with the six senses which include the mind. So here Krishna is talking about this conditioned world the material world and he says uh, the living entities in this world the conditioned souls they are my fragmental parts which uh, is a very important thing to understand that uh, the fragmental part is also called a jiva or a spirit soul. Uh, we are spirit soul and that uh, there's no chance by any spiritual practice that we will become god at any point of time we will always be a fragment of god and we share some of the qualities like we're god, uh, we are god is a person we are also a person and uh, we are creative god is also creative so we share some qualities but he has them in unlimited quantity and we are just a fragment a little portion So he says the living entities in this condition world they are my fragmental parts. The thing is uh, in the Vedas it is explained that the soul uh, comes to this material world and and it has some rebellious attitude towards God. So the it's like uh, this rebellious mood uh, is like uh, well you are God but I don't want to serve you anymore. So this this world is the place where the conditioned soul in habits and krishna explains uh, the the living entities in this world they suffer very much with the six senses which include the mind and uh, well why is it such a struggle why is it so difficult it is explained in the vedas that the senses when they are uncontrolled they become like wild horses if you've ever seen how a wild horse is captured and there is an attempt to train him you will see that it is very very difficult process and if there's any hint of putting a saddle on the horse even a rope around his neck the horse just goes crazy and starts kicking anyone around and one only an expert man can train a wild horse it's very very difficult and uh, the same thing happens with the senses the conditioned soul comes to this world thinking that oh now i am god and i will enjoy with all my senses to its to their limit so the for example the tongue becomes wildly uncontrolled and whatever is eatable will be eaten without any discrimination and uh, this is very frequently seen in and and people in america and western world because they will eat all kinds of meat and if you see how that meat is prepared it's just horrible and and because there's a temporary pleasure in the tongue then it doesn't matter how the meat is obtained how the whole process was uh, uh, made to obtain that food doesn't matter just it tastes good pay no problem so this is very very unwanted because the senses when they're uncontrolled well this is compared to animal life if you put a piece of food on in front of a dog if the dog is hungry he won't say oh today i'm fasting or he has no choice is completely controlled by the senses so the man when he has no control over his senses it is like wild horses and there's all kinds of 
sinful activities and undesired activities that are uh, happening because the senses are uncontrolled. And well, the typical example when there is a very beautiful woman and if she is very kind of a cheating woman, she, she will have many men and she will ask one man, oh, you give me a car and another man, you give me this and another man. And they will all work very hard because they want some sensual gratification. And because not able to control their senses, they will do whatever it takes just to give money to this woman. And the woman will, of course, cheat them and exploit them to the limit. So when the senses are uncontrolled, which is for the most part a lot of the population of this world, then it's very easy to control people and they have very little intelligence. They're just dragged by the senses. So this is a very miserable condition. Because in this world, there is very few people who are actually pious and who have good intentions. Especially these days, uh, corporations, governments, and etc. They are not very kind and they will do whatever it takes to, to get money and they will cheat in so many ways. So the innocent people, they are not very well educated in spiritual knowledge and having their senses like wild horses, well, then they're totally cheated and abused again and again. So this is not very well recommended. And of course, this includes the mind, because even if your senses are somewhat controlled, if your mind starts thinking, oh, if I just had this late model car, then I will be happy. And then here we go again, this big endeavor to work really hard, unnecessary endeavor, to achieve this material object that then you have it and then where's the happiness? There's more anxiety because somebody's going to scratch the car and now I have to pay for years and years. And so, so this uh, live, living a life controlled by the six senses is very, very full of anxiety. And Krishna sees that and he says, no, this is very, you're struggling very hard. You're not supposed to struggle that hard. I mean, this world is certainly difficult to live in, but uh, if you have just a little knowledge and you control your senses, then you don't have to struggle that hard. You, you don't need to even struggle hard at all. And he explains how to achieve this higher state of mind. And this is also called the mode of goodness or pure goodness, which is even higher. It is uh, important to understand how to solve this problem because some spiritual paths say, well, you should just sit down somewhere in your room and stop the activities of all your senses and just think in nothing. And although this sounds poetically very nice, but it's very impractical because the mind and the senses, they have to be engaged. They have to have some activity. You cannot just go blank. You know, It's not possible. It is just a dream, some poetry. The fact is that the senses and the mind, they need an engagement. And what Krishna recommends in Bhagavad Gita, he says to engage uh, your love, your activities and surrender unto me, and surrender unto God. Dedicate your activities in such a way that all your senses and your mind, they're always thinking, remembering, glorifying the activities and the qualities of God. And when this happens, this is called Bhakti Yoga. This is uh, the best solution on how to solve this uh, extreme anxiety generated by the senses. It takes uh, some knowledge, so I'd recommend you to read the Bhagavad Gita as it is by the author Srila Prabhupada, and you'll get a very clear idea how this process works and how to achieve uh, the freedom from the anxiety of the senses. If you have any comments or questions, please visit our website, thevedicway.org. Thank you. Hare Krishna.